Hi friend, in this video I will show you how I am using the iPad as developer to be more productive and make the workday a bit more fun. For the last few weeks I was traveling around and working from different Airbnbs on the seaside and the iPad helped make this trip more productive and comfortable. The iPad is great companion in trips, but I am also using it daily working from home. When I'm working outside the home office, iPad most often is used as secondary screen. There is not much to talk about in this scenario, because this is just one more screen to have space for the iPhone simulator, documentation or messenger apps. I used the iPad as an external screen for a while ago. Before Sidecar was introduced, there was an app named Duet, which had about the same functionality. Sure, small and relatively cheap external monitors are available on the market, that can be more cost-effective solution if you need just external screen, but the iPad is a multipurpose device. For all the iOS developers, probably also web developers, the iPad is just one more test device. I can and should test my apps on iPad even if I am developing an iPhone app only. The Apple review team loves to test all the apps on iPads and reject them if found any issues. But what about programming on iPad? Yes, it is kind of possible. I even developed an app from start to finish on the iPad. I have a video about that project, check it out if you are interested. In short, Swift Playgrounds are great for starting learning programming or building small prototype apps, but it is not supposed to replace Xcode. Playgrounds have too many limitations to be used for bigger projects. My favorite use case for iPad is staying in iPadOS while I am sharing the keyboard and mouse from the Mac. In case you didn't hear about universal control, you can switch between iPad and Mac seamlessly and drag and drop files between them. As you may notice, I am pretty active on social networks, usually I edit photos and videos on the Mac, but then I post them from iPad. TikTok and especially Instagram apps are not perfect on iPad, but they work well enough to post content. Sure, you can create those posts from iPhone as well, but when I'm switching to iPhone to create posts, I can find myself hour later still researching or mindlessly scrolling social networks and I'm not a big fan of typing on the screen, so external keyboard is always better iPad is better for video calls as well. As all we know, Mac cameras are made from outdated garbage and are not even comparable to iPad and iPhone cameras. Even I have my Canon camera next to the desk. Usually it is connected to the streaming PC and using it as a web camera is overkill during trips. If I have an iPad next to my Mac, I always use iPad for video calls. Not all the great apps are available on Mac. For example, only Focus 4 beta version is available for iPad for a while, but we still don't have a Mac version for it, so I keep it on separate screen on my iPad. Some apps are just working better on the iPad. I see no problems using the Discord on the iPad, but Mac desktop client is far away from perfect. Slack has had a similar problem in the past, but I have no complaints about it lately. I like to make handwritten notes, but I do not do hourly planning for the day consistently. But when I do, I want to write the plan down on iPad. Sure, paper notebooks work as well and I like to use them, but I can't justify taking a notebook on a trip just for day planning. Also, it is not very efficient for storing purposes, search, indexing, <laughs> nothing works on paper. So I am using iPad to plan my work days. Another case is sketching. Again, I use it to sketch app interfaces in, on the paper using just notebooks, but it is way more effective on iPad. When I am not using the iPad actively, it is my widget dashboard. Widgets on Mac are available only on the sidebar, so I keep my iPad with widgets next to my workspace to take a quick look on them if and when I want to do that. And for sure, I like to use the iPad as a standalone device as well. If I want to do some focused writing sessions in the morning before work, I usually grab an iPad to concentrate more. I'm running the shortcut to disable notifications for 25 minutes, play the deep focus playlist and dive into the focused writing mode. I'm using the Magic Keyboard for those writing sessions. It is nice, but a bit pricey. I can recommend this one from Cheap Keyboards, that is Logitech Key 380. I bought it, I don't know, about five years ago. No, more, back in my corporate career. I don't know, seven, eight years ago. 
It's quite old, still works, no problems at all. It works from two batteries and I <laughs> changed them once. But any Bluetooth keyboard will work. I'm currently testing this one, Slim Combo MK470. Let me know. If you would like to hear my opinion on this one, I will do video review, but that is for my daughter. Keyboard is important to have in my opinion because if I'm not doing writing with Apple Pen, so, or sketching, or maybe photo editing, then it is writing on keyboard, using it with keyboard. So, in my opinion, keyboard is must have with it. Also, iPad is my favorite ebook reader. The Kindle is nice, but the iPad will be better choice if you are reading many technical books with code examples, diagrams, or PDFs with illustrations or comic books. Also, I like highlighting features. I'm making summaries after book reading. Those highlights make this process much more manageable. You can highlight text in Kindle as well, but in my opinion, that works better in iPad. Check out this video if you are curious to see what else I have in backpack when I am traveling for those shorter or longer trips. If you are subscribed already, thank you. If you not, but you are still here, so maybe consider that. And yeah, hit that bell notification button as well. Thank you for watching. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.